Hi, I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, the winter of 2015 is gone and spring has sprung. And that means it's tax season. Yeah, it's important when you're a freelance artist and we've got someone to help you out as our guest this week. Her name is KK Barton. She is a CPA and she specializes in voiceover people. Yeah, one particularly that we know, Roger Leopardi. So you'll get to really find out what you need to look for as a sole proprietor or an LLC. I'm going to have a Widom's World Report from the VoiceOver Atlanta show again. This time I've got a cool little segment from Joe Cipriano. And I have a cool interview with a little girl who sounds like an even littler girl. Pretty cool. Oh, oh that's cool. But we're out of winter, so no more coolness, only <laughs> really hot stuff. And we've got your questions. You can send them into ewabshop at gmail.com and we'll answer them on the show. That's coming up on East West Audio Body Shop. Join us in the chat room. We'll see all of you there. He is the home voiceover studio engineer to the stars of Los Angeles, California, a Virginia Tech grad whose knowledge of the latest recording gear is second to none. He is a voice actor and the home studio master. Hailing from Buffalo, New York, his home studio skills and knowledge of voiceover recording is unmatched. When Dan and George talk shop, people listen, and the talk continues tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. This is Rob Marley from Austin, Texas. This episode of East West Audio Body Shop is brought to you by Edge Studio, providers of voiceover education, production, and technology. Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, products handpicked for voice actors. The Home Studio Master, get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. And VoiceOver Extra, your one-stop resource for voiceover success. And now, live from his high-tech facility in Santa Monica, and his soon-to-be former penthouse studio in Buffalo, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Hi, I'm Hi, Dan, Dan Leonard, Leonard in the East. 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 You know what would be cool is if I turn the right knob. East, East, East. And? <laughs> God. And this is George Woodham in the West turning the and wrong knobs. Um, all the knobs. Get a hold of your knobs here, kiddo. Anyway, we're East West Audio Yo, Body, Body Shop. Shop. Okay, close enough. All right. <laughs> you know, we spend hours and hours preparing for this show. If you had any idea of the chaos that ensues in the last 45 minutes before we put this show on, you'd go, how do you even do it? And the fact of the matter is, is we just turn it on and go, Hail Mary. <laughs> no. Maybe it won't work. This Although is I why must. we this is why we do not fly commercial airliners. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. And a great show we have for you tonight. Not that we don't always have a great show, but we always like to bring in unique guests and stuff that is relevant to your voiceover career, whether it's technical or business or performance. Um We've got somebody who's going to talk about accounting because that's one of the most important legs of your voiceover business. You've got to be a good business person and accounting and tax prep and all those things as a freelancer, very important. And her name is KK Barton and uh, she's Roger Leopardi's CPA. So she comes highly recommended. And she knows how to manage someone moving from one state to another, particularly moving to California. So, Dan, you yeah. better pay attention tonight. I am going to have a few questions about that. <laughs> Boy, preparing a house for sale is one major P-I-T-A, but it's getting done. And that's the most important thing. Lots of paint, lots of caulk, getting rid of stuff. Anyway. Time now to take a look at the news. EWAB's News. All right. Well, we just have one news story tonight. Um, and we'll try to keep it short, not go into too much detail. But on this one, it's a mega microphone test online now. Thanks to Mike Varela, who's the studio engineer, the head studio engineer at the Don LaFontaine VoiceOver Lab. He and I hung out together. He did all the work, though. I will not take any credit here. But 
Back in December, we got together to perform a controlled microphone test using three professional voice actors, one script, and 23 mics. We set up these mics in a specific spot with one fabric pop filter and a measure of distance that remained the same from actor to mic. So we were really trying to be consistent. All mics were tested in an identical location in a serial fashion, one after the next. It was very boring. Trust me, I was there. Um, The aim of this test was to get a clean and measured sound from a variety of mics and vocal styles. To perform this test, we opted to eliminate the most variables we could from the equation. We chose one script for the entire test. We measured the distance from the actor to the mic, as I said. We chose the same cable, the same mic preamp, it's a Focusrite ISA, the same spot in the room, and of course, the same actors. In post, we RMSed leveled, so we averaged the levels out so they were as close to as we could as possible. Each file to minus 22 dB as to eliminate voting based on volume changes. Because if anybody's listened to a bunch of mics, you know how much of a difference just a dB can make. It'll throw off your frame of reference. Um, then there was no pro- processing or no final mixing was done. All presented files have been exported from Pro Tools as MP3 at 256 kilobits mono. And you can listen to and or download any of these files. So if you want to know where this is, it's at Nuance Tone. That's N-U-A-N-C-E-T-O-N-E dot com. Nuance Tone slash articles slash mic dash test. That's where it's located. So enjoy. One of our good friends, Rebecca Davis, is actually one of the voices on the test. So uh, All right. yeah, you get to enjoy her voice. But uh, it's a really handy tool for those that really want to see how much or how little little. the difference (laughs) is between all of these microphones we even list the the pricing so you can get an idea where these all mic these mics all fit together yeah i i'm generally of the opinion that it don't make a big lot of difference you know i mean well you did just teach a webinar on that topic i did and and we compared a bunch of microphones i should probably play the the audio from that talk because i i used you know tl 103 the 416 um my vaunted E100S, my CAD, uh, you know, my AT20 or uh, 3035, which you can't get anymore, unfortunately. Right. Um, and a bunch of, yeah, a CO1U, an AT2020 USB. I threw everything into the mix. And the differences are so subtle. I don't believe that the mic that you have, it's, if it's a good microphone, it's going to capture you as you exist. And that's the sound you have. Not one microphone, whether it's got tubes in it, transistors, or little dinosaur right, you know, writing out sound waves in there, like in the Flintstones. It's not going to make a difference. Unless it's the microphone not- is physically broken right. or just really, really bad. Right. So you, you spend a little bit of money, but you don't, yeah. you know, you don't break the bank on it. I, I, I really stuck my neck out at the, uh, at the, um, <laughs> <laughs> at the voiceover Atlanta, I was yeah. I was brought up on stage during Chuck and Stacy's live show, um, and I got up on stage and there was a question about microphones. Chuck said something, and I said, "Well, you know, it yeah. doesn't make nearly as much of a difference <laughs> as you think. And you can take a twenty dollar karaoke mic and a Neumann U eighty seven and make the karaoke mic sound better than the U eighty seven. And he's like, "Are you telling people they're supposed to use a karaoke mic?" I could just see his hair flying around as he's saying that. He went all Fox News on me. Never mind. Just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> twisting my words. Uh, but it was it was hilarious. But um, yeah, it, it it's a cool it's a cool demonstration. And those of you that like microphones, you get to geek out on this one big time. But I put the the link at the at the bottom of the screen so you guys could more easily find it. I can't wait to check that out. But that's it for the news. That's it. And that's a look at the. Web's news. And now time for a little Q&A. Remember, if you have a question for us, we love talking about anything in the voiceover business, preferably the technical stuff. But as you realize, we don't like to be technical in what we talk about uh, because it's not brain surgery, kids. All right. Anyway, uh, our question tonight uh, comes from uh, Bill Cannon. And uh, he says, hi, Dan and George. That's you and me. Uh, I love the energy, passion, and fun that you're both bringing to your show. Now I'm starting to sound like O'Reilly here. Uh, I've recently discovered you, and I'm looking forward to viewing all of your podcasts or webcasts. They're wonderful because I'm just beginning the process of becoming a VO performer. 
How many times have we heard that before? <laughs> but a, a noble profession. Now, if I may take up a little bit of your time, this guy is, you can tell he's also a writer. Uh, it, it shows. Um, I'm wondering the best way to utilize my time to practice. I currently don't have a studio set up yet, but was wondering how do you pr both practice VO? And I've been practicing recording myself, reading for one half hour, as well as voicing tongue twisters. Any thoughts, gentlemen? What would be the best way to practice? Well, George, you just practice by <laughs> making everybody else's stuff sound good. <laughs> right, yeah. I won't answer this because I'm not a practicing yeah. voice actor. But yeah. I can but, say but, this very short thing, which is read actual scripts that you hear. Transcribe spots off of television and read those. That's right. A, that's a... How about that for a, a yeah. really quickie? Yeah. And, and it's, it's important to listen to TV, not necessarily watch TV. Right. Uh, I know it was Roger Leopardi was telling us a few weeks ago when he was on, he said, I haven't really done. He hasn't worked with a lot of coaches. What he's done is he's worked with a lot of people, you know, and he's listened to what they do in the studio, but he watches TV. He listens for what's popular. You know, like I always say, if you watch TV, if it's a great show, if you can turn off the sound and know what's going on just by the picture or turn off the picture or close your eyes and listen, and you'll know exactly what's going on. That's what really makes it work. What is it about, you know, somebody who is, you know, announcing on, on TV uh, or just doing voiceover or listening to a documentary, I've been listening, I've been watching uh, the American experience a lot this year on PBS and Oliver Platt's been narrating that. And he's got this really quiet, deadpan voice yeah. that is just perfect for it. And uh, you listen and you pick up the things from there. And you don't imitate it. You see what how they use their voice, but you don't try to imitate the voice. You try to imitate the inflections, those sorts of things. So yeah, reading into a you know reading into a digital recorder, you know just a, a little microphone uh, digital recorder. If you don't have your studio set up yet, or just talking into your laptop because there's a microphone on your laptop and put Audacity on there. Absolutely, read, read long copy, read short copy, read read stuff from you know from TV and radio. And listen to yourself back, but more importantly, send it to somebody who knows what it's supposed to sound like, or at least from a performance uh, point of view, and get an honest appraisal of what you're doing. And from there, you know, it, you'll you'll learn the learn the way to the to get yeah. there. I mean, be a, be a jazz musician, but voiceover. You know, list jazz musicians. They know the music that they're playing. They know it so well. They study it. They listen to it. My friends, they play I, it on the corner. They all play night. it. The, the friends, <laughs> but they're not just playing it. They're listening to it. My friends right. that are all great jazz musicians today, they have humongous collections of music, all kinds, not just jazz, but all kinds. And just be a study, a student of the craft. And then once you've heard a lot of these spots, then you can start, you know, practicing what you like, you know, and and work with the genres that you like. What resonates with you the styles you like, the length of the genre as well. Because some people are not going to be able to handle doing hour, two hour long documentaries. Um, other people love that stuff. So yeah. make sure you know what it is that you like and start listening to that kind of work. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Tardio says you also take some improv classes. Can't hurt. Always. Oh really yeah. Good. Well, the hardest thing is acting. I, right. I guarantee the hardest thing, unless you have an acting background is actually the acting. That's the hardest. Yeah. So yeah, get loose. Be, feel natural behind the microphone. That's right. Uh, he has one last question. He says, thanks again. And by the way, would there be a market to offer audio editing as an add-on as a business to other voiceover performers? I know that eventually I will be editing my own work. I didn't know if there was a demand in this area, but hope there might be. Muchos gracias. Sorry, I am limited bilingually. Um, not exactly sure what he meant by that. But <laughs> yeah, editing. Uh, look, it's... Editing is not something you learn overnight. Uh, you know, it's something that you like with voiceover, you got to practice it. Do it a lot. Do it a lot. You know, I'm doing a project, you know, 96 slides, you know, a lot of editing in there. But mm -hmm. I because but when you do it and practice it, you get very, very fast at it and you learn to do it very fast visually and still have the faith and trust that what you've done is Correct. I, yeah, I think I think what he'd like to do is offer it as a service to other people. Which, I know. You know, that's what I, you're saying. yeah, it's like I, there are very few people that take advantage of 
a virtual, basically what you want to be is a virtual assistant or a virtual engineer, as I like to call it. Right. And, um, that, uh, that kind of thing, it's a very unique situation. You have to have a very tight relationship with your client because it's very, very quick turnaround stuff, extremely fast. If you think it's fast for the voice actor, it's even faster for the editor because you're in the middle of that kind of that time zone. So you, you have to be extremely on the ball and you just have to have to know that whatever you're doing, they can trust to be perfect because whatever you send out is what's going to be heard. They're not going to have the time to listen to it back probably and approve right. it. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Fast paced stuff. Yeah. So practice it, practice it, practice it, and you'll, you'll eventually get better at it. And if you think that you've got the skill to uh, offer that service to other people, absolutely. There are people who are willing to pay for it if they are high paid people, because otherwise the profit margin on, on, on some things is just a little bit low at this time. Yeah. yeah so don't take those low ball jobs so we can all get paid. Right. Chip Dolce. <laughs> this one just slipped in. Ah. Uh, Chip Dolce. I like to think it's Dolce. He um, says, great job. Guys, love the work you're doing. Question for you. Any tips for setting up a Porta Booth Pro or a similar product? I'm hearing a boxy sound in my audio, and I'm wondering if it's something I'm doing or improper technique. Thanks so much for your great show. I know, Dan, that you did a whole video on this topic, didn't you? I did. You know, and it's, you know, the thing about the Porta Booth is it's magnificent if you're in a hotel and, you know, and it's, it's really designed for a 416, although the, uh, the, the Epigee mic works really well in it. One of the things you have to understand about it is it's not just forward that you're talking, but sound is still going to bounce around the room. You've got to have something behind you as well. Mm -hmm. So, but, and that makes it that all that much more uh, effective. And, uh, you know, and, and the video was, was plastered in the, in the chat room that we did when, uh, when I got my, my Porta Booth Pro. Oh, cool. Uh, And also the technique is talking to the top of the lip of the Porta Booth not through the center of it. That's when it starts to sound like a cave. Although right. Harlan's using actual Orlex in these things right now, but still because of its size and the way it's configured, sort of talk right underneath the top lip and that will eliminate a lot of that sound. That was an amazing discovery I made one day when I was just like, gee, it sounds kind of cave-like in here. And then I started to, wait a second, <laughs> that works a lot better. Yeah, it's so. like anything else. It it has its own unique properties and requires its own technique. And once you get it right, it'll sound great. But it's, Absolutely. you know, it's not just uh, paint by numbers. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> All righty. See, I told you we could fill in fifteen minutes without any question. You know, no like, what are we do tonight? No problem. All right, you've got an interview coming up here, and then we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with uh, some stuff from Joe Cipriano from Vio Atlanta. So yeah. don't go away. We'll be right back. Now back to Ewabs. Thank Dan and George's wives. For what? You have no idea. Now, here's Dan and George. Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting, led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. VO Studio Tech. Recording made simple. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. This is Jim Tasker from Los Angeles, California. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Randy Thomas chiming in. Hi, this is Joe Szymanski. Hey, this is Rick Robles. Hi, my name is John Patrick Armstrong. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish him. Thanks, George. You make it easy. Now back to Ewabs with Dan and George. No, it's George and Dan. No, it's not. It's Dan and George. George and Dan. 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 George and Dan. Dan and George. George and Dan. Dan and George. 
Hi, this is George Whittem reporting for Whittem's World and East West Audio Body Shop, and I ran into Anna Kate, who's here to learn more about the craft of voice acting. But I have a feeling you've kind of got a pretty good amount of experience already, so tell me how long you've been doing voice acting. I think I've been doing voice acting for around three or four years. Three or four years, okay. How did you get into how did you discover voiceover? How did you know what voiceover is enough to want to do it yourself? Well, um, it, my brother started it like, just like many of the other things I have done. Like cuz I started soccer cuz he did it. So your brother influenced you a lot, yeah. huh? Your brother gave you help give you some ideas. Mm -hmm. So was he into voiceover before you were? Yeah. Okay, got you. Okay. Did you feel like it was something fun? Oh, were you doing other kinds of acting before voiceover? Yes, I I was doing on camera acting. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did before I started on voice acting. Got you. So you already had a b acting, some acting background, so that obviously helps a lot with voiceover. Yes. When you started voice acting, did you already know how to read at that point? So you were able to read scripts yourself? Yes. Yes, I did. And you were about six years old at the time? Seven. Seven? Okay. I think, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I okay. don't remember. What's one project that you were really proud of that you got to do in the last couple of years? So, I did a, a countdown for a Walking Dead game, and it was kind of scary, but... So, yeah, so you did the countdown, but they also had to show you pictures of these scary creatures and stuff, right? At the same they time? Didn't they didn't? didn't no. But it I was scary for you script. to just read it or was yeah, it scary to like, watch it? And um when we heard it online, because it, it didn't have like any pictures with it, it was mm -hmm. just the countdown. When I heard it, it had like scary noises with it and I was scared. The noises sometimes are scarier than the pictures, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the noises bring in all of the scary details. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so funny that you said Walking Dead. I was watching some video of Walking Dead, and my daughter was sitting with, next to me, and I thought it would be really scary, but I don't think there was any sound. She was just seeing the pictures, so it wasn't so scary. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how the sound is a big part of what makes something scary or yeah. exciting or whatever? Because, I mean, if you watch something scary without the sound, then it's not scary anymore. Yeah. Because... Mm -hmm. You know what I forgot to ask you? How old are you now? I'm 10. 10. Okay. But your voice is younger. Yes. Right? So do you find that to be really helpful? It's helpful when you're doing voiceover, but sometimes when you're in school, because I'm also short for my age, so some people think I'm a third grader when I'm actually a fifth grader. I can, so yeah, I can understand that. Social life, it's not as helpful. That's hard, huh? It'll be hard for a few more years. And then when you're 16, 17, People are going to think it's really cute. <laughs> yeah. My mom says that I'll have this uh, voice for like forever. So mm -hmm. it'll help me when I get older so I can play younger roles. Mm -hmm. But I can still sound a little bit older than, I, than what I sound like right now. Right. Did you meet some of the other adult women here that also have some, uh, high voices? Did you meet any? No. There's a couple. I don't see any in the room right now. But I've met a few women here who are have that have that have that young super youthful voice as adults yeah they all they find voiceover it's a great not play. very common but yeah it's not when it does happen it's very helpful when it comes to voiceover what do you think you've gotten out of voiceover atlanta what are you really glad that you were able to come to this even though you have all this experience how, do, how has it been for you well it helped me feel like so, like because before I wasn't always sure what I was actually doing and if what I was mm -hmm. doing was right. Mm -hmm. But then when I did this, it helped me figure out what I need to do when I when I was doing voiceover. So that's great. Well, thank you so much for sitting down to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. She was a sweetie and um, a pro, too. It was really cool yeah. talking to somebody so young who is really, have been at her for a while. She gave out these really cool flash drives that had a little purple jewel stuck to it, just so you could Cute. remember it was from her. A little bit of bling. Yeah, very nice.
But the next thing I have is a lot longer, but I think it's very interesting to anybody who has any interest in what Joe Cipriano does or any promo voice actor does. Promo. This is Joe doing promo live from the, the show floor, from a booth, and it's the real deal. He's doing it with Source Connect all, you know, and an ISDN bridge for part of it, but you'll, you'll see later he switches. Anyway, I don't need to tell you much more. This is Joe Cipriano doing promo and then giving you a bunch of extra pointers at the end. This is so Roll it. cool. So I, I'll hear them, no problem, right? Yeah, your headphones are plugged right into the mic okay. port, so, and so they'll hear you, you'll hear them. All right. Do you want to do echo test just for confidence? Oh, yeah, that's a good, good idea. Interesting. There's the lock. Hello, one, two, one, two, testing, one, three. Hello there. Excellent. Okay, that's good. I love echo test. Yes, echo tests it are just good. It makes you feel confident. So what I'm doing is I'm hooking up to Joseph at home at my home studio, and the um, the client is Warner Brothers Television, and they're gonna dial in ISDN at home, and to the home studio, then we'll bridge from home, and then be doing it here from VO Atlanta. <laughs> Hashtag VO Atlanta. <laughs> Hashtag you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a speaker out there too? Yeah, AJ? I'm gonna oh, tell cool. everybody, when you okay. hear the speaker, you're you're working okay, you to be cool. quiet. So. That's good. And but. I don't have to record. All I have to do is just be me. All did, right. Did you find the... You got connected, though, Joe? Yeah, we, yeah, we just connected. tested it. So I'm connected Sweet. to my home studio. With the I love when stuff happens and it's good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> have any candy today? No, come back tomorrow. We might have candy. Okay. All right. Be a good girl. You're mean. <laughs> Like you're working. <laughs> hey, I'm working here. So here's the level. Okay. Mike and Molly, Mike and Molly is moving. So pack your bags, roll up your sleeves, and unpack the fun. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. Level looks good. You yeah. know what's, That's so awesome. <laughs> I knew it's funny when you started speaking. Everyone went, <laughs> automatically. I, I know, I got them trained. I told everybody, as soon as they hear Joe's voice out of speaker. Literally, you started reading it out. You hear, shh. So how are things back home? Warren. We just made his coffee. It's a talk back Oh, we did? Yeah. You know, coffee would be a good thing. We're going to have to do that at some point. Yeah. So. Wait, does it count? I just want to let you know that we're we're at a at a conference, and actually the studio that I'm in, there are people standing outside of the studio so they can hear you. So please don't say, Joe, that sucked, or you know things that you would normally say. <laughs> you want me to get them out of there? Are they bothering you? No, that's right. Warren knows people. He can, he can get those people out. Of here. <laughs> Uh, stop, yes, let me disconnect. But do you see Joseph B? All right, I'm going to yeah, disconnect uh, the ISDN. All righty, I'll disconnect here. So let's see if Warren is on here. I don't see him. Are you going to go direct? He's going to go direct, oh. yeah. This side? Oh, here he is. Hold on a sec. <laughs> let me go. You're in mono? Uh, I am in uh, mono, and I'm sending at 96. Actually, you know, I can up that a little bit. Beautiful, oh, yeah. yes. Okay. Beautiful. All's well now. All's well now. We'll just keep it like this. Okay, sounds <laughs> good. Sounds good. Sound, you know. Excellent. So now we're directly connected. How nice. <laughs> so Mike and Molly is moving. I don't know if you knew that or not. Yeah, yeah. I you just, guys are goofy in the morning. I, we I are. Like I just, I just read you. that here. Mike and Molly is moving. Yeah, we'll play stuff down for you. Oh, good. It's kind of, I know it's, I, I thought it should be Mike and Molly are moving, but since it's the show, it's <clears> Oh, that's right. Moving. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, it's people, promo we'll grammar. We'll see how we have room, but we'll do some while. Yeah, that's right. There yes. You go. Yeah. Okay, uh, we're listening. Okay, we're listening. Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving! So pack your bags. Roll up your sleeves. Left down three. One, two, jump! And unpack the fun. Oh. I'll get the mop. Mike and Molly. Mike and five Molly, nights five nights a week. Cool. What's going on? That So that line where she says, on the copy, it says, lift on three, two, one. 
But is she really saying she one, two, three? She has a huge... One, two, three. No, she, she says a lift on three. And then she goes one, and two, and she never gets to the three. Oh, okay. So, because he pushes her down the stairs. <clears throat> gotcha. Okay. Cool. Okay, so here we go. All right, here we go. Tense up. Yeah. <laughs> Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving! So pack your bags, roll up your sleeves. Flip down three. One, two, three. And jump. unpack the fun. Oh. I'll get the mom. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. Woohoo! What do you think? Was that a take? Was, was that a one in a row? Was that a star take? Yeah. That was one of two takes. The okay. second one. Hey, be Warren, could you turn one? your send to me down just a touch? This is so cool. Isn't he great? He's doing it. Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. So pack your bags. Roll up your sleeves. Flip down three. One, two, two. And unpack the fun. Wow. I'll get the mop. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. And now you know why. And now you know why Joe's right. Exactly. Now you know why Joe's license plate says three beeps. Yeah. yeah exactly. That's interesting. Yeah. Three beeps on the first and the end. Not every time, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. All righty. Probably because you're hearing a sound effect. Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. So pack your bags and unpack the fun. Let's down three. One, two. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. Cool. Well, that's, that's the demo track. Was that Joe or was that the demo? That was the playback. Sounds yeah. like that wasn't the playback. That's live Joe. Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. So pack your bags and unpack the fun. Let's jump three. One, two, two. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. That would be the opposite of early. <laughs> I need my camera for that. Mike and Molly is moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. So pack your bags and unpack the fun. Flip down three. One, two, two. Mike and Molly, five nights a week. It's unbelievable. Wow. There, wait a minute, I see signs. It says Warren Wood. Wow. The crowd is going wild. <laughs> okay, see you later. Bye-bye. It sounds like there's like 10 people in that studio. Right. That's funny. Whew. Whew. Dude. About 100 degrees in here. I bet. <laughs> Well, you know what? I think we need to say Mike and Molly has moved eight more times. Eight more times. Ooh, man, they were raking you over the coals this morning. Is that the typical length of a session that you do? Yes, that would be. So we did. Now, normally, really not much was different in all of those spots. And it just depends on the mixer that you're working with. They can just steal. Like when I do like dailies, like for a show like uh, Queen Latifah or The Talk or something like that. And we're doing a 30, a 20, a 10 or 15. Most of the lines are the same. All the lines were the same in this. And the in, the mixer will just take it and place it in the other spots mm -hmm. so that you don't have to read them full. Oh, oh but right. it, it just what's different? Yeah, yes, exactly. Okay. This producer from Warner Brothers happens to love to hear everything read and 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 which is fine, you know. I mean that's what they're that's what they're booking us for. Sure. So they get to hear it and they don't have to wait for him to move in place and 
maybe I'll say it in, in a different way that they like, and they might use it somewhere else. So, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's that. so when they ha already had it recorded before, and you were listening to the scratch tag, that's you a scratch. recorded that? No, that was whoever that was. Probably, uh, oh, okay. uh, you know, like the editor might have been, or okay. um, somebody else. It's hard to hear. Brothers. I can tell. Yes. Yeah. No, it actually, yeah, some of them are so bad. There's no, right. there's no uh, inflection. No, right. It would be Mike, Mike and Molly's Molly mode. <laughs> Join the fun. You know? It's like, oh, right. it doesn't sound like it. Right. It's a better voice here. Right, right. right. There's three beeps for the first line and then three beeps for the last line. And then are you timing yourself in between? Or uh, is that what actually, what normally what we do for? is, no, I use a stopwatch so that I can know to, how long the end of the spot is. So I need to be out, if it's a 30, I need to be out by 29 and a half. Oh, okay. So I'm looking for that. You're looking at the Like I asked time. him that, I said, okay. we still is this a normal spot where we're leaving 10 frames? And he said, no, it's all you, we're filling it up. But even though we're filling it up, we still have to leave uh, a little yeah. bit, like 10 frames at the end, so yeah. that it doesn't get clipped when it's, when it's up. They sound music or sound effects or something. Right, so it, it might, okay. I'll be done, maybe it's a little bit more of music and then that's it and it's okay. out. Because if you don't, and if you fill up the whole 30 seconds, for example, in the sequencing when it's on the air, you it might say, uh, like, uh, what is it? Uh, Mike and Molly, five nights a week. It would, if, it, if it goes right to the end, or, or the K, mm -hmm. uh, five nights a week, you know, it wouldn't get it all. <laughs> so if you leave 10 frames, everything gets okay. said and then it moves on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And is it, the time, is it one, two, and you're going on three or right after? Is it one, two, You three, make believe three, there's an imaginary fourth. Four, okay, so, so it's, it's that same. It's, you get that cadence, rhythm. it's beep, 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 My Monday. Okay. You lift on four. <laughs> lift on three? <laughs> no, <laughs> lift, lift on four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you're on ISDN sometimes, and depending on the delay, mm. sometimes, George, you'll understand this too, they're, they're, they, it's called slipping the read or, or slipping the send. So what we're reading to, there's a built-in delay. On mm -hmm. ISDN, it's like a 10-frame delay. So when you're doing something for Fox or CBS or any of the places, they take what I'm reading to, what you're hearing the music effects, and they slip it 10 frames early, and that's what they send me. But they're listening to oh. the one that's 10 frames later, so that I get the one 10 frames earlier, I read to it, and by the time it comes back to them, they're hearing only me uh, syncing up with their version of it hmm. 10 frames later. Like a delayed thing. Yeah. So when the delay, delay gets long, like if sometimes we're on source connecting, it gets to be like over a second, a lot of times the mixer just rolls back to where you would normally roll back and then start the spot. And because there's so much of a delay and he hasn't rolled back enough, I only get two beeps. So it just goes beep, beep, and the music starts. And I go, okay, hold on, wait a minute. I'm only, I only got two beeps on that one. He goes, oh yeah, yeah, we got a bigger delay. I got to roll back for it. So. All right, well, that was exciting. It's always great to listen to and watch Joe Cipriano because he is a pro of pros. One and of the speaking, masters. One of the masters. And speaking of one of the masters, uh, somebody who has been with us for 182 episodes of East West Audio Body Shop, our perennial sponsor, and you know, we're not worthy of him, uh, Harlan Hogan. And if you uh, scroll down our page at all here, you can actually go to his website, where he sells voiceover stuff. It's called voiceover essentials. And he's got everything you need for voiceover in one place. All you do is go to voiceoveressentials.com and you'll see all the great stuff he has. He's got his signature series stuff that we're always talking about, the headphones, the VO1A signature series microphone, which by the way, is a great microphone for voiceover yeah. designed by Harlan Hogan. And by the it's, way, it's in that mic shootout test we did. Uh, and you'll it, get it to is. hear. Wait till you hear how good it fares against a lot of other really expensive mics. That's right. And, uh, and, and a lot of other great stuff. And uh, last week we talked about some of the, uh, the literature he has there, including his own books, but it's, it's a great place because the most important thing that Harlan delivers is great customer service. This is one of the things perhaps we don't always talk about, but when you have a problem, <laughs> he personally deals with it, but there's very few problems. <laughs> Sorry, I just found a bad link on the website. <laughs> oh, what, I what, clicked on the link that says, what, see what the customers have to say, and it said internal 500 error. Oh. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> hey, 
stuff happens. <laughs> no, anyway, but, sorry. It, but if we, if we complain to Harlan about it, he'd fix it. Yeah. So that error would be gone. Um, but he's got a great staff, uh, great, you know, great stuff that you just have to go to the website and go through there and say, you know, I could use one of those and you can order it from him. Like mm-hmm. uh, the microphone stands he's got here and the Vox the, pop, the Vox pop $20 metal mesh pop screen that fares very, very, very well uh, favorably, favorably to like the $50, you know, uh, Stedman or whatever it is. I mean, it really is really good. And it, the thing holds up when you mount the arm, it stays where you put it. Right. And of course, you know, the Porta booths, which, you know, we we were talking about earlier, great things for voiceover and you can get it all in one place, voiceoveressentials.com. And if you want to go there, go to the bottom of our page and click on the picture of Harlan talking into his Porta Booth Pro, and it'll take you right there and you can shop to your heart's content. That way he, he knows that we sent you. That's right. Harlan, thanks a lot for being with us and making this show happen and uh, go over and buy his stuff. Darn tootin'. Yeah. All right. One more spot and we'll finally be back with KK, who's been very patient. Very patient. Be right back. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. And now back to the only webcast done with two cans, two geeks, and a string. East-West Audio Body Shop with George Winham on his end in the West and Dan Leonard in the East. All righty, we're back here in East-West Audio Body Shop and waiting patiently, more patient than anyone should have to be to be on our show. Uh, we have a great gal on here. Her name is KK Barton. Her background includes over 20 years of experience in virtually all aspects of taxation and business consulting. Her career as a CPA began with Coopers and Librand in Detroit, Michigan, and Price Waterhouse Coopers. I actually played on the hockey team, PW uh, hockey jersey, in Denver, Colorado. And she worked as a senior manager at a local Denver firm. In 2009, her family made a lifestyle choice to move north to Montana. Moving to Montana soon. (laughs) There she formed the Barton Group PLLC located in Bozeman, Montana. Did I pronounce it? It's Bozeman, right? Yeah, you did good. Okay. And she's a certified public accountant licensed in Montana and providing services throughout the United States. Uh, She has expertise in providing accounting, tax, and consulting to individuals, including people like us, entertainers, freelance people. I'm just trying to drag this out to see how patient you can be. K.K. Barton, wait. Welcome to (laughs) East West Audio Body Shop. Thank you. Thanks for that uh, great bio. I mean, it doesn't seem to fit the bill with me, but I guess it does. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll find out. Well, yeah, I guess you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to back it up. Yes. As yeah. Groucho Marx once said, it's early yet. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, running a business is, you know, it's important. Now we're going to lose our camera off and on, but it'll be It back. happens. But she can hear us. Um, Running a business as a freelancer is very, very difficult because, you know, you got to do everything yourself. So what are some of the fundamentals for running your voiceover business from an accounting financial perspective? Oh, wow. Well, that, you know, it depends on the cycle you are in your business, but um, I'm going to approach this as if you're starting your business since I don't know, you know, where you're at. 
Um, and I, I think the first thing you would want to do is have a separate bank account along with a separate credit card. I, I always call it keeping church and state separate. You don't want your personal stuff commingling with your business stuff and vice versa. Um, that's a great place to start. And that's the easiest thing you can do. Um, if you don't want to explore anything else but that, I think that would protect you come tax time to make life easier for you and your accountant to prepare stuff. Um, the second thing I would say is to keep all receipts. Um, and you can have any system you want. You can either, you know, just throw it in a folder, throw it in your car, throw it wherever you want, scan it, do whatever you need. Um, I'm just an advocate of just having receipts and throwing it in a little folder. There you go. You got your loans for business expense. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, so those are, I think that's another easy one. Um, and then the third one, which I think some people um, might find a little challenging is a, an accounting software um, or intimidated by. And, you know, you can be as, as low maintenance as having an Excel spreadsheet, you know, and just popping in your receipts of invoices and your expenses monthly, quarterly, whatever you want to do. Um, and you can go full blown and get QuickBooks. And um, I am a business person, so I don't have a Mac. I use a PC. We won't hold it against you. I know. I know. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, we lost half the listeners. <laughs> um, so I know a lot of people use Macs. A lot of my clients use Macs. Um, that shouldn't prevent you from talking accounting language to your accountant. Um, most accountants probably have a PC. Um, what you can do is use QuickBooks online and it's a little pricey, but it could save you, you know, because then you could, you could buy the software, you go online just like we are right now. And, um, you know, you can have your client come in and just drive whatever they need to drive. Um, and then I could come in as a, as a CPA and drive whatever I need to drive. So. Um, it's a pretty nice fix for the, the Mac versus PC users. Um, cause unfortunately I have to have a PC for my software that does the tech stuff. Yeah. And I've, um, gone, I've, I've actually gone to that too. I'm using QuickBooks online with my Mac and, uh, it was set up by some professional people and it's just like my old QuickBooks only it's online. It, it does everything very, very quickly. Now, after using QuickBooks for about 10 years, now I think I'm actually going to figure out how to enter all these expenses. So I know where these things go and stuff like that. that that's always fun at the end of the year. Well, you're using QuickBooks. You know, yes, here's all my receipts. I added them all up. Try entering you know, them. <laughs> you know, depending on, on your bandwidth for paying for this stuff, you know, some, some of my clients love looking at the numbers and counting every single thing. And, and I look at them like, you're nuts. Focus on what you're doing, you know, do your thing. And I will either help you or find you a good bookkeeper that can just set it up for you. You know, a book, a good, good bookkeeper can do this in like an hour or two. It costs you maybe a hundred bucks and then you're set forever. If you keep that software yeah. and um, it, it reduces the pain. And I guess it comes to your, what's your bandwidth of pain on this kind of stuff. Yeah. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Now, I like that term. Yeah. One of the most interesting things I think that some people think about when they start their business is how do they, you know, how do they become a business and what type of entity are they? Are they a DBA? Are they a partnership? Are they an LLC? So what your choice of entity, how does that affect how you pay your taxes? And, and I guess that's why people choose these different form, forms of business. Yeah. Um, again, it, it goes back to, it depends on, what level you are in business. You know, are you just starting out? Are you full blown? Are you making a ton of money? Like what do you need to do? Um, and then what, what can you do to maximize the tax impact? So usually when you're starting out, um, I would recommend just being a sole proprietorship. And there's really good, you know, because, you know, you can take baby steps into the business world. And what's good about a sole proprietorship is it's low, Oh, admin, you know, all you need to do is maybe have an Excel spreadsheet or an accounting software, um, you know, your own little bank account, your own little, little credit card, but that's all you really need to get the business up and running. Um, the downside to it is you have to pay self-employment tax on all of your net income that's taxable. And that can create kind of a crunch come April 15th, or if you're doing estimated payments, like you should be, 
um, you know, it's just something to think about. Um, usually when you're starting up though, you have a lot of upfront costs and you can have, you know, a tax loss. So that's just something to consider. Um, what else? Oh, okay. I'm, I think that's it for sole proprietorship. And then I think the next phase would be an LLC. And what an LLC is, is a formally or organized entity. And depending on what state you are, you kind of, you have to check the state rules. And depending on the state, you look at if those LLCs are taxed, but generally speaking, LLCs are not taxed at that entity level. It's a path through entity. You're still subject to self-employment tax, but what it does, and I'm not a lawyer, um, I married one, so he, uh, we're kind of a fun couple, I'll tell you that I'll much. <laughs> <laughs> depending <laughs> exactly no more you don't have to comment on that <laughs> leave that to your imagination um it protects you from liabilities and a lot of people in the entertainment industry voiceover industry and i would say even artists think well what do i have to be liable for you know i'm just in my booth doing doing my thing and i say yeah 99 percent of the time that's fine I am a business advisor, so I go to the 1% worst case scenario on things. And what if somebody sues you for your voice? You know, just for like product, product liability, let's say. I don't know if it could happen, but it might. So, of course, I go to the 1% least case scenario, but that's what I think about. But that's basically what an LLC offers. It doesn't really offer you anything tax-wise because you're still going to get self-employment tax. You're, you're just organized now with the state. So what, what I usually do is somebody is organized in an LLC. There's this little tax rule called check the box. You can check the box to elect to be an S corporation, which opens you up to a more formalized entity again. So I'm doing tiers, sole proprietorship, LLC, and then S corp. And an S corp allows you to have employees. You do payroll tax. Um, the net earnings from that entity are not subject to self-employment tax. So those are kind of like the positives of having an S-Corp. Um, the negative to an S-Corp is if you are a sole shareholder of an S-Corp and you're running your payroll, you have to make sure the IRS isn't going to come back and say, hey, you're not giving yourself enough payroll and you're running everything through as draws, which are tax-free. And they're not subject to self-employment tax. So there's a little game you have to play. And it has to be a reasonable compensation you pay yourself. Um, but I prefer the S-Corp entity because it does shield you, gives you those liability protections. You are a business. And then you can kind of save a little, if you will, on self-employment tax. Um, but it has to be within the bounds of the IRS rules, of course. So those are the three entities I think you can choose from. Um, I would never go corporation route unless you you know, have loads of employees and you have like products that you're selling and those sorts of things. Right. So I think that's neat for this conversation. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense. I mean, it's, most people are, their business will remain, you know, themselves, maybe an assistant, um, you know, not, you're not going to have lots and lots of people working for you unless you're, you're Bob Sauer and you have your entire family working for you. Um, but um, there's, you know, it's important to, to have these, to understand what these are really for. But for the most part, as a freelancer, just being a sole proprietor is probably the, the easiest and best choice. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, and, and unless it gets a little more complicated, you know, if you're, if you're working in different states, you know, you may or may not have a state tax issue and maybe having it, being incorporated might be more beneficial. Yeah. But, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's the way to go. Yeah. Now, now right now I'm, I'm in the process of moving. So I'm going, of course, going through all these files and stuff like that. And at the end of the year, I go through these files and I look at all these receipts and I'm trying to offset all this amazing income I make as a voice actor uh, <laughs> against all the, the, the expenses I have because I travel a lot. And I have to advertise. I've got to be on the internet. I've, you know, I've got to hire coaches. I've got to go to conferences. I've got to do all these things to promote myself and to promote, you know, my business, you know, my consulting business. I have to promote myself to uh, people who are seeking voice actors. How do you, how do you determine what is something that you write off for a voiceover business? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, 
you know, I go, you go back. I, the way I give tax advice and the, what I follow is I look at the tax code. Oh, I'm cutting out again. Don't worry about it. We Just still hear talking. you. Okay. I look at the tax code and I work within those boundaries. Um, and what the tax code says is business write-offs have to be ordinary and necessary business expenses. So what is that? They give you this huge gray matter to work with, with within that. But if you're a logical person, you look at what is ordinary and necessary to run my voiceover business. And then you go down the list. And um, for example, I mean, I have, you know, the home office deduction is kind of a big one for you guys, because most of you guys are having your booths at home. And there's two ways to do the home office. If you don't want to track receipts and you want to go, I wouldn't say the lazy route, but the, the least painful route, there's, there's a new method that they came out with last year, the IRS did, um, and it's called the simplified method. And basically, they want to take the square footage of your space that you're working in that's designated for work over the entire square footage of your house, your, your apartment, your condo, wherever you're living. And you get a deduction based on that. I think it maxes out at $1,500. So if your living costs are really high, you wouldn't want to do the simplified method. But it's the simplified method. So usually it's going to work for you know 80% of you guys. Um, that's, that's a big one. And then auto expense is a big one too. Because I'm, if, you're, if you're considering you're working out of a home office and that's your main location, and you don't go into, you know, corporate America, and you don't go into an office there. Most expenses you're going to do for business, if you're driving to meetings, you know, driving anywhere for business is related to your auto. And what you need to be doing is tracking your mileage, because that will determine what you can write off and how much. And it's, it, it adds up. Um, because if you don't drive a lot, but you use it for business more than like 50%, um, you can write off lease, a co- lease costs, gas, insurance, you know, pretty much anything to run that car. Um, right. And and a certain amount per mile that you allow yourself? Well, you can, there's two different, again, it's tax rules, so it's crazy, right? So there's two different ways to do it. You, you track the mileage and then you determine based on the mileage, if you write off the mileage or you write off the actual costs. It, where I, I live in Montana, we don't drive anywhere except to go hunting. <laughs> so there's not, you know, I'm, I'm, I would use actual costs because my cost to run the vehicle is more than my mileage, but there is a mileage write off you can choose. And the, the software, depending on who you, you use for preparing tax software, will hopefully drive that process and let you eliminate which one's not the best choice for you. So those are the two, I would say home office and auto are the two biggest. Um, and then equipment, equipment's a big one for you guys. Um, anything you need, again, that's ordinary and necessary to run your business, your mics, computers, iPads, um, whatever it is, you can write that off. And usually there's a tax code section called 179 and you, it allows you not to have to depreciate those assets like you, you would think you can write off most of those up front and then you get the benefit in the year you actually have the cost. Um, some other ones that I've seen that I don't think people miss, but they don't think about are like their SAG dues, um, commissions to their uh, agents. And those are really usually kind of big ones. What else do I yeah. see? Um, so something simple like, what are you paying PayPal? If you're, you know, you're doing a lot of a lot yes. of uh, a lot of work through PayPal, they're taking three percent every now and again. That adds up as well. It sure does. Um, you know, anything web related, internet, your cell phone. Again, cell phone's a little tricky. And I like again, I always come back to if an IRS auditor was looking at your return, what are they going to focus on? And that's kind of how I guide my clients and that's how I practice. Um, it's, it, it, it's, for me, it's the best approach because I'm not trying to be super conservative. I'm not trying to be super crazy. I'm just saying, what would an IRS agent say if they had your, your return and, and, you know, what would you be on the hook for? Hopefully nothing. Um, so if you just follow that concept, I think you, you'll be good with tax, tax world in your business. Another one is coaching. 
Um, I know some of you guys don't believe in coaching. There are some, a lot of people that I work with that do do coaching. And I think it's, 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 it's excuse me, it's expensive. So that's a nice write off too for you guys. Um, trade journals, websites, demos. Um, again, anything that's ordinary, necessary to run your, run your show, you know? Now you see guys, if you hire George and I, or I, you can, you can write it off. That's right. <laughs> you didn't think about yeah, that. So it's like a 35% discount right there. There you go. That's true. You know, we, we, we make what we earn hard earned cash doing the things that we need to do to help you run your voiceover business from a technological point of view. And you save in the process. That's right. That I is the goal. That. That's the golden nugget from tonight. By the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's going to make eWeb's essentials for sure. Hire us, write it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. well, we got a ton of, yeah. we got a ton of questions from the chat room. I mean, I, I don't want to keep you too late tonight. You've already had, you're waiting so long for us, but our, our audience has a lot of questions. Yeah, I, I can just imagine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to some of the audience questions here. Um, let's see here. Uh, first question here from Jack DeGolia. Uh, we're advised to keep separate bank accounts for our personal funds and voiceover business funds. You mentioned that a little bit earlier. He's a sole proprietor, as we all are. Uh, what's the proper way to draw funds to pay myself from my business account to a personal account. Is that pay an expense we should list on Schedule C and then have to show on a W-2? Hope it's not too complicated. No, that's not. Um, that would be considered a draw. And what that is, is basically you're paying yourself. Um, and hopefully, if you're tracking your income correctly, it will be taxed by virtue of putting your income and in, in expenses on your, what they call a Schedule C. And shows up as self-employment tax. So I say draw away. Just keep some money in there for your uh, tax bill come tax time. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Anthony asks, what is the threshold of income where one could would consider switching from sole proprietorship to LLC or an S-corp? I'm thinking of things like the impact on an SET. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so you have to consider the cost of preparing another return, an S-corp return, for example, um, the cost of administrating payroll, which is usually a monthly fee, and then you kind of weigh that versus what the tax savings would be on self-employment tax. And depending on the level, um, I've, I think I've seen anywhere from like netting 75000 to about two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand 250000 is kind of the sweet spot or S corps um, where you actually have some savings. All right. Um, let's see here. Anthony has another question here. What percentage of East of each voiceover job should we set aside for taxes? That's a, that's a fascinating question. It's like, how do you figure this? I just pay an estimated tax, but mm -hmm. what would, what would be a good percentage to think about with that? You know, it, it, it also drives, so there's a federal tax rate and it varies because it's, you know, it's by income category. So it goes up as you make more money. And then you have a state tax rate. So I would, I would say, look at your last year's return and kind of see where you, where your effective tax rates are. And if you have the right tax software or the tax preparer, it'll show you an effective tax rate. Um, and if you don't know, I would say, 25% just probably is conservative because you're just taking it off the gross. So 25% um, is probably high, but if you can get the information and look at your effective tax rate, um, I would do that. That helps a lot. It really helps you be more prepared. That's for sure. Um, Amy Serenzi says, I just started an LLC and this dovetails into what you're just saying, but I'm told that LLCs are ideal for folks making a hundred thousand or less per year. Is that correct? Sure. <laughs> I mean, sure, it's great. Um, again, I don't think an LLC is going to protect you um, from any, like, it's not going to be a huge tax windfall for you if you have an LLC. 
it might create more tax for you because of the state tax laws. For example, California has a franchise tax for LLCs and you it's based on net income and it's of course complicated. Um, so it might hurt you tax wise, but it might protect you from a legal perspective and just, just from an organizational perspective. Yeah, I know we're not talking legal here, but I know that, uh, my CPA said it's probably better to carry insurance for your business than it is to have an LLC at that level. Yeah, I think that's good. And speaking of insurance, um, that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about having business insurance on your stuff, on your equipment. Um, if you don't, I would recommend getting it. I've had a few clients have catastrophic events and it's a disaster and read the policy because you don't want to go into litigation with an insurance company and come out on the wrong end of that deal because you had the wrong policy. Mm, that's true. Not yeah, fun. I think a lot of people probably rely on their homeowner's insurance and stuff like that. If they're working out of their home, which and, may or uh, may not be a good idea. Which which may or may not be a good idea. <laughs> uh, no, Beth, I would revisit that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Beth, Wins Beth Windsor Stewart, additional LLC question. Is there a recommended structure? I think you kind of said that you like S Corp. That's what she's asking. You, you prefer yep. S Corp? I prefer an S Corp under the guidance of a CPA. Right. If you're doing it alone, go, go so good luck. Yeah. Dan, take it away. Yes. All right. Uh, Devox, never short of questions. Uh, what about a business offshore? Because we all know that Devox lives overseas, but he would be interested to hear about, about either way. Okay. <laughs> I don't really know how to answer that without more information. I do, yeah. have clients that, I do have clients that live in the United States and work abroad. And you have to be careful depending on the country. Um, most EU countries have a treaty with the United States, a tax treaty. And usually you're on the hook for taxes in both spots. Um, it's, I liken it to state taxation, but it's just in a different dollar format. Um, how about the Cayman Islands? I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, how much money are we talking here? Are we talking millions of dollars? Are we talking just <laughs> we, we hope. <laughs> we hope. <it. laughs> Oh gosh, that's a little risky. I would take that offline. I'd have to do a private call with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sharon Lambert asks, now this is, I guess this is sort of related, but this is actually a cool question. If I am, this is from Sharon Lambert. If I'm temporarily working abroad, for example, flying to another country to record a spot, we wish, uh, am I subject to double taxation because you have to pay taxes in the country where you're working and you also have to pay tax in my home country? You know, yep. the, you know, trying to cross the border into Canada, it's like impossible for voice actors. They always ask, what do you do? I'm a voice actor. Are you coming to work? No, no. <laughs> I'm going to a party. Well, Canada's pretty, Canada we have a treaty with, and I lived in Detroit for many years. So I had a lot of people that worked in Detroit, lived in Canada and vice versa. So there's a commuter rule with Canada. But generally speaking, if you're like, let's say you're flying over the pond. Um, right. You will most likely be subject to the taxation if you're working in that country. However, usually we have a treaty with that country, hopefully. Um, then there's this thing called a foreign tax credit. And it's again, I like it. It's a state income tax. It's the same kind of concept where you pay tax maybe in two different states, but your home state you get a credit for. Kind of the same concept with the federal where you're paying tax, let's say in the Czech Republic. And you, let's say you pay $1,500 of tax in the Czech Republic, you get a tax credit in the United States, hopefully dollar for dollar. So it should work out. But those are, those are pretty heady kind of returns to do, and I wouldn't advise doing it solo. All right. Um, Ring Vogel asks, uh, I've invested a lot this year on seminars and equipment. I do have a DBA checking account and website. How likely will the IRS say I'm a hobby and disallow my expenses? Are you making money? Well, I would hope if so. Making, <laughs> if, you're, if you're making money, then you, you should be safe. Um, what's, the hobby loss rule. Yeah, go ahead. The hobby loss rules are, you know, if you continuously year after year are posting up losses, 
for not any good reason. You're going to, you might get a red flag and you might get caught. Um, I've only seen it once in my 20 years that the IRS has said something, but also I would never prepare a return and post loss year after year after year without having a conversation saying, what's going on? Are you a hobby? You're just having problems. You know, are these non-cash deductions, which I guess depreciation could kind of fall into if he's, he was talking about equipment, but um, yeah, that's kind of risky business if you're not posting income. Yeah, it's it's an it's an interesting uh, an interesting thought. Um, Beth Windsor Stewart asks, uh, "I made investments in equipment prior to officially getting paid for any work. How can one claim that one had no money from the business to buy the stuff? Does this make any sense?" Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, you you can call it. It, depending on your business, if it's a sole proprietorship, let's just work in that realm. You you can call it a capital contribution or startup expenditures. Um, if it's equipment, it's probably going to be a capital contribution, but you can depreciate that kind of stuff. Um, it depends how old the equipment is, too. You know, if you've depreciated it in a different business, you've got different issues. But if it's just, you know, you bought it for the business and didn't start it for a while, um, yeah, you can you can you can work with that definitely. Yeah, well, go- going back to that hobby question for a second, when how is something considered a hobby? Is there is there a threshold that the government looks at, or you know, as they do, they they look at if you've been posting losses. I think I think and don't quote me on this, but I think it's for more than three years in a row, and then it might they they would red flag it. Um, there are, and I, I have a client, not, not voiceover client, a different client, um, different type of client, but same concept for this, um, that had posted loss for five years, but there was extenuating circumstances around that. And she had bad business coaching and then she got good business coaching and things were looking up and we had, you know, like an eight, it was like a bright line test. Cause I, when I look at that kind of stuff, I look at, um, tax case law. And there is a lot of tax case law around that. So there is a bright line test you can look at and say, okay, if I'm posting loss for five years, um, what's the reasons why? And you can just check the box on the different, you know, what the, what the ruling said. And you, I think there's like eight or nine different things that the, that the tax law would say, well, okay, that's, that makes sense. And there's probably a hundred things where they're like, that doesn't make sense. You're a hobby. Okay. I think we sort of talked about this one before. Green Vogel asks, what's the sweet spot for LLC versus sole proprietor? Yeah, I think, again, it, it depends if there's more income coming from other places. You know, you've got the American um, Health Care Act now, which is a different animal in itself. So I would say 75000 to two fifty is going to be an S-Corp sweet spot. Anything above that LLC, anything below that LLC, but that's in a vacuum, assuming that's all the money you make. And that's the only source of income you have. You don't have investment income. You don't have another job. You don't, you know, you don't have a trust somewhere, all that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Uh, I got one from DVOX again, and this I think was answered, but I'll ask ask it again anyway. If you buy a computer, mic preamp, et cetera, for your business. You can write it off, but how long before you can give yourself the old one when you buy a new one? Hmm. hmm. So in other words, like uh, if you sort of have an addiction to buying <laughs> microphones for your business and you buy another and you buy another, you know, is there a certain point where this is not really business write off anymore? Hmm. I don't know how to answer that without getting myself into trouble. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> that's a good question. Actually, there's a lot of people right now going, "Yeah, oh, I know yeah. that problem." Yeah, I got I a few mean, of these. You know what I'm going back to is is it ordinary and necessary for you to perform your job? Right. That's what the IRS would say. That's all I can say right now. Yeah, maybe three microphones <laughs> going beyond three or four might be pushing it. <laughs> you better have a very good justification for why I need all those microphones. Because I wanted it. <laughs> Not good enough. Um, Larry Hudson says, what about income through PayPal? 
My understanding is the IRS has not yet dug into those funds. Your opinion on how to handle those funds. Can you launder well, your money through PayPal? Is that what Land- Larry is asking? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Everyone just go to PayPal and just knock yourself out. There you go. Um, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, let's talk about gross income that's taxable. I'm not talking about write-offs and everything. Anytime you get paid to, for a service you're providing, in whatever form it is, is considered gross income that is taxable. So if you're working via PayPal, are you you're doing a service and you're getting paid for it via PayPal? So by virtue of that, it's taxable income. They'll, they'll hunt you down for that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, a lot of employers are smart and they'll, they'll give you a W-2. So they know that they're, you know, they're, they're reporting that they're paying you. So it's important that, uh, Absolutely. you know, when, yeah. you, when you sign NDAs and those sorts of things, usually it's accompanied by a, uh, by a W-2. Uh, right. Nancy Halpin asks, uh, this is a math question. <laughs> Maybe I should let you ask this one, George, because <laughs> I'll get lost just going through all these X's and Y's. This is like. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, are, are, regarding an income, right off. So you think you can't do it? Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten the numbers yet. Is there a ratio such as I earned X and I spent Y? Does Y need to be a set percentage of X? Oh, um, well, hopefully it should, if you want to make money, like I'm going to be the sarcastic answer first. Like, yes, yeah. you want Y to be a percentage of X. So you have your business profitable and you're, you know, you're making money. Right. Um, I, hmm, there is, you know, I do have some software that, you know, will tell me what the IRS red flags, let's say, you know, they'll, they'll say, oh, this person earned this much. And because of that, their write-off should be in this wheelhouse. Um, so yeah, there is a percentage and it varies. I can't really give you a good percentage if I'm, you know, I'm talking about X and Y, but um, there is one. And, you know, I, I can definitely point you into the software that can, can show you that kind of stuff. And that's just IRS data. You can even probably go on irs.gov and find that. Yeah, and hopefully they'll have the answer, and maybe the right one. Uh, last question here from Reen Vogel. I heard that it's important to track my activity, for example, auditions, so it shows that I am working towards a profit. Do you agree? We always say that in our business that our job is to audition to try and get work. So that per- sort of, I guess, plays into that, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's part of your business. It's ordinary and necessary to get your job done, to get a job. Um, yeah, I would say track it. I'm I'm sorry. I'm thinking of like five different ways that could be a problem though. <laughs> so um, well, give, give us, give us one example there. Well, if you're established, there's one answer. If you're not established, there's probably another answer. Mm. And there's somewhere in between that is probably gray. And when I say when you're not established, you know, you're just like probably the rest of us, you know, you're saying the rest of us that aren't voiceover artists, when you do a job search, there are certain tax rules associated with that. If you're established and you're going to do, you know, you're going into a meeting to do an, an interview. I can't remember the right word. I'm, I'm going business. But if you're going to do an interview, a job interview. An audition is um, an interview. Trust me. Yeah, a micro no, interview. Yeah. I mean, you can track. You can keep track of your mileage and all that kind of stuff um, for, for that. But I mean, I don't know what else cost there would be um, associated with going to an interview. I can't get it right. Going to an interview. <laughs> she sidetracked me with all this tech knowledge in my brain on that that question. Um, well, I could probably post something on my website. To give you further clarification on that. Yeah. Speaking well, of well, websites. Spe- spe- you and I were thinking the same thing. Speaking of websites, if someone wants to get a hold of you, because you obviously have a lot of experience with uh, some of these otter things in the, uh, in the tax world or working freelance, how does one get a hold of you and what's your website? My website is the Barton Group, PLLC.com. 
And if you just Google KK Barton CPA, you'll sh it'll show up. Um, and it's just best to email me probably. Um, you can probably find me on Facebook. Um, that's about it. Okay. I'm in Montana. So you can find me. <laughs> it's a big place though. I, got that's the, why I, I, I lost the tail end. <laughs> the Barton Group. And what's the last part? The Barton Group. PLLC. Dot com. Oh, thanks. Because yeah, there's another the Barton Group dot com. So got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a PLLC that I check the box to be an S corp, for example, um, my own entity. Gotcha. But I'm a P, which means professional. All right. It's just a fancy, it's a fancy LLC. Yeah. All right. Well, for somebody who's never done an interview before, I think you have a promising career at this. Oh, I mean, thank you. That's no. really kind. No, but no, you were great. This is this is exactly what, you know, we, we never know what's going to happen. We get some people on who are experts and they're like, oh, I'm so nervous and I don't know what to do. You're fabulous. You Thank are you. a natural at this. And I and I and we're, we're so grateful that you could come on. And, you know, we we have some some different types of things that you wouldn't think about for voiceover. But uh, our audience is telling us and I can tell you this was this was a great, a great interview. And yeah. you provided us with some great information. Oh, good. And we really appreciate you coming on. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Our pleasure. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thanks to KK Barton from the uh, Barton Group PLLC. Did I get that right? You did. Okay, great. All right. Well, we're going to clean things up here and wrap it all into a nice, light, tight little package in just a minute. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on East West Audio Body Shop. You're listening to East West Audio Body Shop. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. Hey, Dad, I know you're watching Ewabs on YouTube, but... Hey, hey, no problem. What's up? He's here again, and he looks hungry. Really? Okay. Hello! Are you hungry for something in particular? Banana! Well, how about an apple? I have one right here. <laughs> Banana! Mookie, make it back up! Dave, don't be disrespectful. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Banana! <laughs> Would you please go to the kitchen and see if you can find him a banana, or at least something banana-flavored? Okay, Dad. Okay, okay. I wonder why he doesn't like green apples. <laughs> Minions. Now back to George and Dan on Ewabs. Yeah, I, I, I could use one of those as an assistant, actually. Everybody needs a minion. Yes. My minions. I want my minions. Anyway. Well, uh, wow. stay, stay tuned right after we sign off. We have another, we have a brand new mug man. Believe it or not, people have been asking for Mugman. We have a brand new Mugman that uh, Jacob has come up with, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, anyway, we've got. Now sit back and relax. It's time for some announcements. All right. Uh, upcoming shows. We've got a couple of people coming up here. Uh, next week, we have Laura Kerner, who will be here talking about vocal health. Now we've had you know Joel Bernstein on talking about stuff that none of us understood, but we found it fascinating. But uh, Laura Kern is going to talk to us about how to take care of our voices, and I think there is probably nothing more important than that. You know, there's nothing like sitting in the booth and coughing all afternoon and going, "God, my voice really sucks today." How do you keep it running? How do you keep your vo your your vocal health? And uh, then the following week, the one and only Larry Davis. And maybe Elizabeth Stir will be with us too. Uh, his his uh, his his partner fiance in crime. too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been they've been engaged for a long time, and when they get married, they'll send out invitations that'll say "Hell has frozen over." <laughs> <laughs> I mean these we'll these two. Goes. I mean, if you've been a long fan, long time fan of the show, you know who they are. But if you're not, they actually met at a voice conference yes. in two thousand right. and eight, and we were there. Yeah. Or was it 2010? I can't recall. No, it was, I, it was 2008. 2008. And they met, yeah. and I remember running into them, in, in, running into them in the lobby and just, uh, they, they were inseparable after that. 
I and just still so are. cool. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, it's always fun having uh, Larry on and uh, and Morgan Freeman and all the other great people that he does. <laughs> yeah, he's a successful guy, and uh, and and it'll be fun having him on. So uh, look forward to those shows coming up. Uh, also, I think we're taking Easter off, though, aren't we? Yes, we are okay. taking the Easter Sun or Monday after Easter off. That is correct. Which is Dingus Day, by the way. Dingus Day is off. Yes. Yes. Officially, for those of us in Buffalo. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, thank our donors of the week. Of course, Eric Aragoni. Yeah, Sherry Benson made a very, very generous donation. Thank you, Sherry. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Patty Gibbons has a sustaining donation. Very kind. If you can't donate a lot, but you like to make a little donation on a regular basis, it's another way you can do it. It's right on our website. There's subscription buttons there. Um We've got the Kenswald Studios and Greg Tremblay for voiceovers with their subscription. It keeps on going. Uh, man, I, there's so many coming in. I'm, I'm really, it, it's just so amazing. My father, <laughs> my God, dad, you really don't Jay, need to donate money to the show. You don't even work in voiceover. Um, and Amanda Fellows. We also have Brian Page, uh, Shelly Avellino. She donates every single month. She's a subscriber. Um, Bill Russell. Thanks, Bill. All right. And thanks, Bill. Maureen Vogel. Holy cow. Have I gotten to last week's yet? I don't think so. Yeah. Phillip Sapir. Yep. It's getting so, longer since, and longer. Since Bill Russell gave, I can give him, we can give him another plug with his dinosaur album here. So much fun, man. Yes. It's a great album. If you've got kids or know any kids. Okay. Who doesn't know kids? All right. Man, really? You're a psycho. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Martin too. He's made a donation. Yeah. So thank Fabulous. you guys. All righty. Uh, for those of you who were watching last week where we had, you know, 30 minutes of Spanish and we were all glued to the screen while it was going on. I was. Uh, Antonio Fanaris came through and provided English show log notes for the Spanish segment last week. Uh, so. Holy cow. Yeah. Muchimas gracias a Antonio. So cool and, of him. Thank you. Yeah. And you can get the show logs. They're right above uh, George's head there, I think, or above my head or no, it's over my head. Yeah, so over my over my left shoulder, if you go up, you'll see you can get the show <laughs> logs right there. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Um, make sure you watch us on YouTube. Easy to do. Just go to ewabs underscore shop, and that's uh, where you'll find us. Uh, no, it's youtube.com forward slash ewabs show with two S's. Yeah, ewabs show. Show. One word. Right. All yeah. right. And the podcast version. I know a lot of you enjoy the podcast version. If you can't watch this show and sitting down in front of a computer or a TV for an hour and a half is not really going to happen, the podcast is available to you. And you can get it on Stitcher, iTunes, through our direct Podbean link, right on our website. There's all kinds of ways to hear the audio version. All righty. And make sure you like us on Facebook. You all have. We got thousands of people on Facebook. Make sure you follow us on Twitter because you've been sending out all these announcements about old shows and stuff. And it's like, oh, I remember that show. And yeah. this person was on. And so pay attention to those. So That's make sure right. you follow us on Twitter. Uh, Twitter at EWABS underscore show. And uh, your turn with Narrator Helper. Yes, Narrator Helper. That is my wife, Amy, by the way. Um, Mary Whittem in the chat room. That's my mom. Uh, Amy is my <laughs> wife. Um, she runs narratorhelper.com and she does proofing, editing, and mastering for narrators. So if you don't want to go it alone, I certainly don't recommend it, especially on your first book. Uh, check her out. Reasonable rates, very professional, great communication, and uh, she'll help you along. Yeah. And if you were listening at the top of the show, you heard Rob Marley doing the opening credits out of Austin, Texas. So uh, you can send in your rendition of the opening credits mm -hmm. so you can get your voice on here and mention your name so everybody can hear how great you are. Make sure it's timed to fit the graphics. So you can watch it on YouTube, see what the timing is for each individual piece, and then uh, record it for us and email your MP3 to ewabshop at gmail.com. Yeah, you get a cool little taste of what it's like to be a promo voice actor, having yeah. to time the time things to fit in with the read and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to have to do it one of these nights. Uh, anyway, um, 
have to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan at voiceoveressentials.com, voiceover extra, your employer's edge studio for providing uninterrupted live stream and bandwidth. Thank you guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, we need to thank the wives, especially this week. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we're right on time. Wait, wait, yeah, we're not doing too bad tonight. Not too bad. Not too too bad. bad. But thanks to to Amy and Marcy and uh, Kathy Curridan, our fine, fine producer who came up with KK Barton this week. She was wonderful. She was great. Uh, Anthony Gettig for monitoring the chat room and getting all of your questions in there. And they were some pretty sophisticated questions tonight. Mm -hmm. I I look at those and the eyes roll to the back of my head. I'm like, "Uh, that's why I have an accountant. Uh, Shelly Avellino for helping out when uh, when Anthony is not in there. Jack DeGolia for doing the fabulous job with the show notes. Jack, we can't thank you enough for all the work you do there. No. Uh, Tim McKean for helping us out with Ewebs Essentials, short little bits in case you don't want to watch a whole show, just get one really good bit. It's over on our YouTube channel and Lee Penny, of course, for being Lee Penny. Oh, uh, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. We got a new mug man coming up. So stay tuned for that. And then we'll get into the after show and we can talk about all sorts of weird stuff anyway. So I think we'll call it a grunt, call it a night. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard still in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Good night, everybody. Stay tuned for Mugman. Here he comes. Huh? It's me, Mugman. It's me, Mugman. It's me, Mugman. It's me, Mugman! Nice intro. What? Is there a cricket in the house? What are you doing? This is Cricket that won't shut up. Help me find it. Hmm. Hmm. You. Think you can outrun me? I'm on the track team for a reason. How are you outrunning me? Tiana, I got it. Way to go, Mugman. Now let's wipe that little pest off the face of the earth. Wait, what? I have a better idea. What a hero.